thing is uh, two announcements. In case of an emergency, we have two exits, front door. <laughs> that door out there is locked. <laughs> but you can walk in through those double doors into the other side and leave if you need to. <laughs> we locked it on purpose, so you're here. You're stuck. <laughs> Nobody leaves early tonight. Um, the, um, we, have, we have another show coming up in a month. So, so far, every one of our shows has been designed for adults. And next month is awesome. Except for the fact that on November 18th, Annalise Emmerich is coming by. And um, and the reason, one of the reasons why I, I've gotten to know who she is is because uh, my daughter goes to sleep to her music quite a bit. And so um, through that connection we reached out. She is wonderful. and. So November 18th, if you're not doing anything, come by. We won't have a lot of kids, but my daughter will be here. Um, and so that'll be a nice, a nice event. Um, thank you guys for coming out. One of, one of the things about this, this show uh, that, that we do is um, I've been in, in and around the music business for most of my life. And I don't do this as a venue. This is not a way to make money or a way to build, a, you know, this is a way of giving back to music. And the people who come in here are people who I've known, or I've known of, um, for, you know, and, and, and become true fans. And uh, so I couldn't possibly be happier uh, when I saw that Jack was going to be around Southern California. The first thing I did was say, say hey, listen, we're a place to, to be for you. We're, we're a home. Um, I met Jack about 17 years ago at a thing called the National Folk Alliance. Um, my very and, and you play in, in hotel rooms and people walk from room to room and they get a taste of some of the most amazing, diverse talent that, that exists in, in the country. It gathers at this conference. And my very first showcase, I was sitting next to Jack and I had the opportunity to play four songs with is sitting right next to Jack Williams. And right before my first song, Jack played it. <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, we, we were talking earlier about childlike enthusiasm, but I didn't know what to do. I, didn't, I forgot my name. I didn't. Um, and, and sure enough, it was my turn to play. I forgot my lyrics. And I, and I got started, and I just stopped at one point, and I turned around, and I said, that was unbelievable. Um, because, you know, that's, you shouldn't have to follow that. That's just, it's just wrong. <laughs> Throw me out of the music business. <laughs> um, no, it, it, was, it was incredible. It was awesome. Um, that's the very first time I, I had the opportunity to listen to Jack. 17 years later, uh, we get to host him. So, uh, Jack, thanks for coming out, man. Sure, please. Um, Jack Williams. All right. Here we go. Can you hear me now? If I'd known you were streaming this, I wouldn't have bothered to go get a cold. I'm one for you, honey. And I'm through with the show. But I ain't going nowhere if you can't go. I'm betting my life. My sanity too. The whole ball of wax and the whole nine yards on me and you. I'll risk the farm. I'll take a chance. Cause we raise the stakes from a one night stand to a true romance. You're the one. You're the one. You hung the moon. Stars and sun. You're the light of the whole wide, wide, wide world. You're the one. Okay, no hurricane. Blow this house down. Not even an earthquake 7.9 would turn my head around. If there's a blizzard outside and the winds are strong, but I'm rock steady on my feet where I belong. Send a twist of my way. Let the lightning strike 
But it won't tear apart this house of love, let it howl all night. You're the one, you're the one. To the home, the moon, stars and sun, you're the one. You're the light of the whole wide, wide, wide world. You're the one. Now the breaks on May, the Gulf of Mexico, and that big old Kachobi, the Atlantic, and the Pacific, and the Shenandoah. Now the water is wide, it's cold and it's deep, and it all rolls together in a big blue ball at my baby's feet. Well, I'll catch the rain falling from the sky, and I'll bring it in a bucket to your baby when your well runs dry. Cause you're the one, you're the one, you're the one. Stars and sun go around. You're the light of the whole wide, wide, wide world. You're the one. You're the light of the whole wide, 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 wide world. You're the one. Now, baby, you're the one. Oh, everybody, everybody, light it, Papa. South Carolina originally. Um, that's a state. Uh, you know what I mean? Over there somewhere. Haven't always had much reason to be extremely proud of my home state. Until August 20th of last year, when the mayor of Greenville, South Carolina, the most conservative city in the state, decided to devote the day to celebrate one of its favorite sons who happened to be black. I know that's no big deal here in California, but this is South Carolina. And it was, it was quite an amazing thing because it turned out that the person to be celebrated was a hero of mine. His name was Josh White. And he was the most famous folk singer of the 30s and 40s. And I can tell by the relative age of this group around here, you probably haven't a clue who Josh White is. But the fact is that you're listening to people now who listened to Josh White. And it was the most important figure in my own growth. But the mayor of Greenville just declared August 20th Josh White Day. This was just wild. I just couldn't believe it, you know. Here's a song that I wrote to celebrate Josh White, who broke every color barrier there was. First black performer to tour solo in the nation or internationally from the United States. And he did it in the company of his good friend, Eleanor Roosevelt. Wow. Oh, Josh White was a natural man. Held a blood nickel in the palm of his hand. He raised it up like a glass to his eye. What he saw through the nickel made the natural man cry. Lord, 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 this morning made a natural man cry. Then through the nickel the vision arose. He saw an actor in the jungle with a bone in his nose. He 
saw a maid in an apron with a Hollywood grin. You heard a singer at the back door slamming again. Lord, 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 heard the back door slamming again. High up on a mountain sat the Lord and the natural man. Oh, Josh White got the gift of song, but he never saw the promised land. He never saw the promised land. So Josh White laid the nickel down. He put his hands in his pockets and he strolled into town. He looked to the left and over to the right. But he couldn't find a place to spend his money that night. Lord, 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 he should want to spend some money tonight. Well, he ran to the hotel, dollar in hand. But they wouldn't take a dollar from no colored man. He said, it's getting mighty late. Mr. Where can I go? He said, well, play me a tune. I'll let you sleep on the floor. Lord, 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 Josh White asleep on the floor. High up on the mountain sat the Lord and the natural man. Oh, Josh White got the gift of song, but he never saw the promised land. He never saw the promised land. And here I was, a stranger in a strange land. And um, I learned quickly, though, that what you're doing in the bar is you're there to sell liquor. So 
Well, I sold liquor for 35 years. And I learned some other subtle aspects of playing in a bar. One is you're up there with your rock and roll band, and you look out over the main crowd, and there's a back bar back there, and there's a guy back there. And he's chatting up some beautiful looking woman, you know, and he's got hope in his eyes. And my job is to stand up there on the stage and do this. As loud as I possibly can. <laughs> and see, this, this explains the, the noise of rock and roll. That way she can't hear enough to tell that he has absolutely nothing whatever to offer. cover for my fellow idiot male. <laughs> ah, yeah, and it's the kiss of death to play an original song in the bar. And, uh, I did, I did, and it, and it was not always pretty. You know, people do not go to bars to be excited by something new and different and special. And uh, I had a 20-something-year-old drunk kid come up to me at a Columbia, South Carolina lakeside bar. He came up and he said, Hey man, did you write that? Or is that a real song? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, here's a real song. This was from 1920. In the spring, one sunny day, my sweetheart left me, Lord, she ran away, oh, she's gone, and I don't worry, cause I'm sitting on top of the world, she called me up from El Paso, said, come back, daddy, I need you so, and now she's gone, and I don't worry, cause I'm sitting on top of the world. Shake my tree. Get out of my orchard and let my peaches be. Yeah, now she's gone. gone. I don't worry. Cause I'm sitting on top of the world. Don't you come here running, holding up your hand. Gonna find a woman like you found your man. But she's gone, gone, gone. I don't worry. Cause I'm sitting on top. Sinatra to Hank Williams to Percy Faith and his orchestra, George Shearing, Dwayne Eddy, Shep and the Limelights. And uh, I'm going to rest my voice for one now. I don't play instrumental music. I'm not a fan of instrumental guitar music. I love it as a helpmate for storytelling, songwriting. But 
I never recorded any instrumentals until recently. I started losing my voice about five years ago. I played about a dozen concerts now with no voice at all. There's <clears throat> very little of it left tonight. But um, I had to go and look for a new repertoire. I had to find a way. One thing I did was I turned the microphone up real loud and I would whisper like this. And I'd sing real bluesy stuff, you know, whatever. And uh, I went back and I remember that in 59, 60, 61, I was playing jazz trumpet. And as well as rock. And uh, some of those tunes we used to play from the Great American Sound Bag from the 30s, 40s, and 50s, you know, some of that stuff was really great. And then I decided, well, there's one I particularly like, and I'm going to arrange it for guitar. And I, it gives a fill some space while my voice was missing. And uh, I did, and it was so much fun, I ended up recording it on my new CD. I'm going to play it now because I need a rest. This was the signature song of a great man named Oscar Peterson. Mm. songwriters you've never heard of right here. Henry Gross, Jack Lawrence. Both of them dead gone. Here's another real song. <laughs> this is written by our lead friend Jack Hardy. 
Jack Hardy was one of the great and very most influential songwriters of New York in the 1970s. He was so prolific that he had a, he had a collected works box set this big way back 15, 20 years ago. <clears throat> and uh, when he passed away, Smithsonian Folkways decided to uh, issue a, a CD with two, two albums of his music. Each song sung by a different artist that was influenced by him. And I was honored to be selected to contribute a song, and I did. And this song was written by Jack to celebrate one of his heroes who also happened to be black. She was six feet tall, mean, lean. Her name was Sojourner Truth. And a lot of people don't know who that is, just like you don't know who Josh White is. In this case, you need to go to a real history book, not the one you had in school. The one that he had in school left out people like Soldier of Truth and Harriet Tubman and people like that. But this woman was, uh, she had 13 kids and they were all slaves. Well, she got them all out of slavery, took them up north. And when they came back to reclaim one of her sons, she walked from Ohio to Alabama, found her son, and walked him back to Ohio. That's kind of a hero in my book right there. As opposed to, say, a president who walks in a nation, an entire nation of people, mostly to their death in Oklahoma. We had a president like that. And, uh, and he's in the history book. May I recommend Howard Zinn as a history book if you really like history. You can learn about people like Sojourner Truth. So this is the song Jack wrote, and he took almost verbatim the words that she spoke at a, at a speech. She was, she was an abolitionist, but first and foremost, she was a women's rights activist. And she was speaking to women about empowerment. If you hear something in here that resonates with you, I ask that you sing along. I can tell this isn't a folk music town, but you know, that's okay. I can do it all by myself. I don't need you. It sounds a whole lot better if you do that. Maybe it doesn't resonate with you. Maybe you've never been to that part of the world where this is really a matter of some trouble. Ain't I a woman, said soldier of truth. Soldier of truth, ain't I a woman? Ain't I a woman? Said soldier of truth, ain't I a woman? I can bear the lash, I have borne the lash when none but Jesus heard me. For thirteen children, seen most of them sold. Sold off into slavery. Ain't I a woman? Said soldier the truth. Ain't I a woman? Ain't I a woman? Said soldier the truth. Ain't I a woman? Well, if the very first woman that turned the world upside down, and all of those women together would turn this world. Back right side up, well, I'm getting just better, let on. There's a man over there says to shut my mouth, because Christ was not a woman. I got only one question for that man. Where did your Christ come from? So 
Southern vernacular. Because I'm a Southern boy, you know. You guys don't get many of us over here. I'm surprised you even let us pass those border guards, you know. Because we look at the world completely differently than folks in California. Not everybody, but mostly. And uh, we still have some of us, and Mark and I were talking about, still have what you might call a childlike enthusiasm for things. We get excited about stuff. So if you live in the big cities, you don't get excited much anymore, you know. It's kind of like, yeah, sing it. Plane wreck? Yeah, sing one. Beautiful flower? Oh, come on. I still get excited. I'm a right brainer. You know what that is? You understand the difference between right brain and left brain? Left brain, I, I, have, a, I have a lawyer friend, a corporate lawyer in Escanaba, Michigan. You go into his closet, and there are seven suits with Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday written on them. And his shoes are the same in the pants. That's left brain. He's an extremely organized man. Right brain people don't pay their taxes on time. They don't pay their bills on time. They, can, you know, they, don't, they just have enough left brain to keep them between the white lines and to remind them what red and green mean at the stoplight. You know? So what we right brainers do is we marry up. <laughs> My wife Judy, you might meet, is a, is a left brainer. She's got a PhD in immunology. Every every folk singer needs one of these. It's true. I never paid much attention back when I was a kid. I, I didn't know what left brain, right brain was, but I've I've come to really enjoy the difference in meeting people. I teach a lot around the country, and I find that the majority of people who come to learn from me are of the left brain persuasion. They come to me believing that if they're given the right tools and the right information, they can do anything a right brain can do. <laughs> I mean, well, you know, we do the best we can. When I was in kindergarten, I didn't know anything about left brain, right brain. But I didn't realize that I was face to face with it. Right there at Miss Manny Duncan's house, Heath Springs, South Carolina, 1948. In the summertime, we'd go to Miss Manny's house because Miss Manny was our kindergarten teacher. And she loved having her students come over in the summertime and hang out in front of her house. She had a... Now, what's so damn funny about that? <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. She was... She would have us all come over there. She had a big old white antebellum home with white columns, ancient magnolia trees hanging over the front yard where she'd sit out and rock in a wicker rocking chair and drink sweet mint tea, which she'd feed to us kids. And we'd sit down there at the base of the staircase that spilled out of the great hall and landed right down there at a pond. Oh, it was a powder walk pool, the size of Lake Superior. And we stood there and we looked down into that pond and we marveled at the critters within. Salamanders, tadpoles, frogs. We played with them. Probably did some atrocious things back then. <laughs> All in the interest of science, I'm certain. <laughs> Gotta find out how legs and things work, you know. So I would sit there and I, had, I was just fascinated, totally taken by one critter in that pond. And it was a bug that walked on the water. No reaction, see? I mean, I'm saying, this bug walked on water. Is that nothing exciting to you? I mean, it's too tired, I'm too jaded to care that this bug walks on the water. 
Yeah, bugs normally walk over. I find that this one. And they call it a water skimmer. They call it a water. They have all kinds of names for it. But this is magic. Don't you get it? I was five years old and I was looking at magic. My grandmother, two miles up the road, who tried to make a Baptist of me, she told me about somebody that walked over the way. And I told her, I said, Grandma, I can see this. She didn't like that. So, I would watch the water boat, content with the fact that I was face to face with magic. And I didn't realize back then about this left brain, right brain thing, but sitting next to me, one year younger than me, a hundred years smarter than me, five hundred years less wise than me, was my best pal, Skip Mims. We didn't know back then that before he was out of high school, he would be featured on the cover of Scientific American magazine. We didn't know that he'd become a 30-year inventor for Xerox. We didn't know this. But Skip Metz was there at that polywalk pool we were looking down. He just felt like it was incumbent upon him to explain the world to me. And I didn't appreciate it. <laughs> to explain the world is to deny magic. <laughs> this was magic. I was watching that little water bottle like this, and Skip would turn to it with this cold, hard look, and he'd say, Jen, it's just surface tension. <laughs> but no! No! And I, I didn't want to hear it. I, Skip's still my pal. You met Skip, man. You may not even know. At the episode. He still feels like telling me how the world works. I'm still tell him to shut up. Now, I shouldn't talk about my good friend like that because it sounds like, you know, we don't get along. But the fact is that as an inventor and as a retired Xerox inventor, he's doing some wondrous things now. He decided to help found a group that takes 3D printers, this marvelous new thing, and makes prostheses for kids for free. So you don't have to pay $100,000 for a new arm for your kid. You can just get the technology, and this group will teach you how to do it. So here's the skip mix. So I'll play this song for him. I wrote a song about it. I'll tell you about it. I'm going to play you a really dumb song here. This is his left, right brain. Right brain a song as I can come up with. Don't pay any attention to the lyrics, because they have really no essential meaning. There are people in the left brain persuasion who point out to me that there's meaning there. And then maybe perhaps I'm ignoring it. Um, I tell them, I wrote this song about a water bottle, and I just wrote some simple little dumb lyrics. And they say, well, it sounds like you're writing either about yourself or some politician. I say, I'm writing about the water bottle. For God's sake, leave me alone. I confess 
just all these years, never like to see no tears, no tears. Well, it's a big old world now I see. The daffodil and the bumblebee. I wonder who could have made this bone, made this bone, and the DNA and the pheromone. And the water bird don't want to know about trouble in the water down below. Cannot last for 
Well, now my dream is ended And the wind has ceased to blow My future is suspended Far away, long ago I was born a dreamer That's all I've ever known I dreamed I'd live forever Then I felt the wind sing about their mother and father. I don't think I don't think that's very cool, is it? <laughs> I do. I like it. I do. And I'm from here. I know we well, then, then we understand you. But I do. You know, I love my mother and love my dad. And, and, and I have to sing a song that I wrote for my mother. It's my last song for the first set. I'm gonna take a break. I'll come back and play some more if you guys don't mind. And uh, there's some CDs out there and you can you can go out there and meet Judy. My left brain. <laughs> and, and say hi, and you can ignore the CDs, I don't mind at all. And just don't ignore the mailing list, because it's the only way I have in staying in touch with people. And uh, yes, I'd be grateful to have you on it. 1948 or so, I guess I was, I was four years old, I can't do the math. <laughs> As four years old, my mother gave me her Arthur Godfrey ukulele. I can tell there are only a handful of people in here who have a clue who in the hell Arthur Godfrey is. I know. I know. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> Thanks for those great cookies. Well, Arthur Godfrey, that was the first great ukulele craze in the United States. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, it's an epidemic. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> please, please, God, not, not one more. <laughs> it's a wonderful instrument. It's great for a kid. And my mother used to sit around. She was a cotton farmer's daughter. My granddaddy was a cotton farmer in, in Lancaster County, northern South Carolina. And, well, he eventually turned hush puppy shoe salesman, but that was in a later life. But my mother used to play the ukulele around the house all the time. She would play all the great ukulele hits of the 40s. Really? There were. Red Sails in the Sunset, Moonlight Bay, Little Brown Jug, all the ones you get in the little booklet. You know, when you, when you learn to play the ukulele, <laughs> they give you the booklet. So she would do that, and I watched. All four years of my life, I watched with an intensity that troubled her. She used to tell me years later that I would watch her play the ukulele with, a, with an attention span that was unnatural and unnerving for a four-year-old. <laughs> but she had something I wanted. And it wasn't a ukulele, it was music. She had it, I needed it. I had it in my blood. And that's something we can't explain. Because nowhere on either side of my family, my mother or father's side, is there any artistic DNA? I was probably a mistake. 1943, somebody probably switched us in the hospital. But nevertheless, my mother handed me that ukulele one day and she said, here, Jackie, why don't you see what you can do with it? And she said, now don't forget, it's not a toy. I thought she was full of it. It was plastic and had palm trees painted all over it. <laughs> But she handed it to me, and I remember the first thing I ever played, first musical thing I ever played, because I've been watching. I did this. Then she got up off the floor. And the full understanding, I believe, that her son was going to be a musician, and that she was going to do all in her power to make that dream come true. And she did. Despite all the dire economic warnings and, and differences of opinion of the third member of our three-person family, Lieutenant Captain Major Colonel Williams. <laughs> 
I love you, Jack, and I'll support you in everything you do, but golly, I hate to see you die alone and broke on the streets. <laughs> hey, Dad. Maybe I'll get a job this year, what do you say? So I went on. Two years later, I taught myself to play the piano. I was six. When I was nine, I took out the trumpet. Man, this was going to be my destiny. I really thought I was going to be a jazz player. I could improvise. None of the other kids could improvise, you know. None of my teachers could improvise. They always flunked me in band because we'd be playing something like John Philip Susan. I'd be, you know, Mr. Williams, play what's on the page. <laughs> But I hadn't counted on a one, two, three o'clock, four o'clock rock. I hadn't counted on rock and roll music. That came along in 55. And by the time 1958 came around, I had come to the understanding that I didn't have to learn a new instrument. The ukulele had been in my hands for 11 years. Ukulele. I used to play rock and roll on the ukulele. It sounded a little insipid, a little speechy. We played Chuck Berry. Here we go off and you know all the teenagers would around. You know I was cool. I was the entertainment. But now I had a guitar in my hand for the first time, and this became this, and that became this, and that became this. Sorry, I don't mean to get excited around LA phones. I will maintain my cool. No, I won't. Anyway, I discovered rock and roll. And there was some question as to how my daddy was going to handle having rock and roll music blasting from our garage every afternoon. There was no problem. And one reason there was no problem is that my dad knew that my mother was a person to be reckoned with. She ruled the roots of our three-person family, as far as I was concerned. He grew up with her, one year apart, one mile apart. They knew each other all their lives. And he watched her when she was a young teen. She went up to the Lancaster County Airport, surrounded by the cop fields, to hear Amelia Earhart speak. And she was there to tell everybody to join the Civil Air Patrol. My mother went up and met Amelia Earhart, joined the Civil Air Patrol, and by 1938, when my mother was 17, she was solo piloting Piper Cup over the cockpit. My dad knew she was someone to be reckoned with. And he didn't even know the half of it. My mother turned out to be a, a person who had seven holes in one in tournament golf. She could kick his ass all over the course. <laughs> So he stayed home and read a lot. And my career went along undefeated by all those dire economic things. So thanks to my mom, I got a career and I got a song. She never got to hear it though. She died when she's 13 years younger than I am right now. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna play this a little louder than the others. She might be flying overhead tonight with a golf bag on her back, headed for Palm Springs. It's a song about love, growing up in the deep south in the 40s, and a song about food. The kind of food you can't get here. Unless Cracker Barrel has finally come to California. <laughs> now you understand, Cracker Barrel is really just corporate southern food. It's not the real thing. It tastes kind of like it, but it's really just a place where southerners go to watch Yankees, watch <laughs> southerners eat slimy stuff and get sick. <laughs> Something like that. Early Sunday morning, I'm stretching and I'm yawning, and shaking off the night before. Somewhere in the dwelling, something mighty good is smelling. There's a racket on the kitchen floor. All this chopping wood, and the fire's burning good, and a kettle's bubbling on the eye. There's a ham in the oven, mama's stirring something, son. Touch it, and I'll tell you how. Oh, mama Lou, I'm staying here with you. 
something sweet tonight Swings creaking, mama's tea kettle shrieking on a Sunday Thanksgiving day. I wipe the smile off my face, cause grandpa saying grace, but any kid would rather eat than pray. I wear my collard greens, I want some black eyed peas, I want sweet potatoes on the side. There's an okra gets my boat when it slides down my throat, and of course I want my chicken fries. Staying here with you Cook me something sweet tonight Now the tea is double sweet It cools me when I eat The smell of biscuit rising slow in the pan Mama's cobbler full of berries Time of ice cream and cherries Makes a better out of any man now my memories roam to that old family home where it smelled like heaven all the time. And Grandma never changed from a fire to a range. That's music to this heart of mine. Whoa, whoa, Mama Lou, I'm staying here with you. Put me something sweet tonight. Play it, Jack. Okay. <laughs> Respect. But the 
wonderful world would be. If you haven't donated or you want to donate more, everything goes to the artist. It's super important because it helps them stay on the road. Um, because it's it's their livelihood, people like us, uh, making making our our, uh, our spaces available. So thank you guys for coming out. Uh -huh. All right. All right. It's all you. Okay. Yeah. So they're all good. We ran the level off. <laughs> Down to the hardcore, just the way it should be. That's right. People with little kids, you lost people with little kids. I don't want to have to say, no. I love them. I love them. Pump house blues, no mood to play. Then sold shoes and dried grain. Times are bigger. Train, pump house blues, no moon play. Nine pound hammer, three penny nail. Blind folk singer, spent the night in jail. Federal man says he knows my game. Better shut my mouth. I better change my name. Tent revival in the bitter cold. Spend my money to save my soul. I've laid it down, down in Jesus' name. My money's all gone, and I'm lost in the flame. Over the land, a buzzard flies, soaring higher and higher and higher till something dies. Old coyote, lame and confused, calls the buzzard down, he's got the pump house blue. When my song is sung, you'll be there when the bells are rung. You'll be there when the wreaths are hung. And you'll be there, baby, till kingdom come.
shall I fade and so forget my debts are paid I got no regrets shall I dream dream while dreams remain no buck to pass no moon to blame over the land a buzzard flies soaring higher and higher till something dies oh coyote lame and confused cause the buzzard down he's got the pump house blue more toward the audience than me is drying me out pretty good. I was already pretty better. Oh yeah, thank you very much. I'm used to playing in extreme heat condition. If you guys stick around, our good friend Eric Schwartz is here. And he's gonna do a song or two or three or twelve. We don't know what we're gonna do, but God knows we're just we're gonna do it. It's gonna be fun too, because uh, because you know, as songwriters, Eric and I are apples and star fruit. You know, it's kind of like, <laughs> I like that. I got one song I want to play. I want to tell you one last thing about the Deep South. Those of you who stuck around, I figure, well, I haven't put you to sleep with all the stories. But that's part and parcel of what I do. It's, um, just be glad I'm not Utah Phillips. You go see Utah Phillips, you know, and you'd probably be lucky to get one song out of him. <laughs> I was a military kid, so my daddy was always gone from South Carolina, but we would always go back to my home. And we'd be there summertime, Christmas time, various times of the year. And uh, when I got to be a teenager, and I finally learned to drive. But everybody couldn't wait for us, what everybody in the world waits for, can't wait for, and that's Saturday night. Saturday night. I mean, that's just, you know, that's, that just, that's class to it. Saturday night. This is Saturday. You could always tell it was Saturday night in Lancaster County. Because every good old boy in the town, we're talking about a town of 200 people here, would be out there with his late model Chevy or Ford, and it'd be, Polishing it up. Saturday night was gonna go on. Everybody in that town either worked for the spring made cotton mill where they made spring made sheets or the bow water paper plant. Smelled terrible, but it was a good job, I understand. So on Saturday night we'd all go. Everybody, everybody would go up to the big city, seven miles north, we'd go up to Lancaster. 5,000 people, it's a big city, to get lost there. <laughs> and we would drive around Howard's Hub Motor Inn. Those were the three drive-ins where you'd go get a drink, a sandwich. Howard's Hub Motor Inn, Howard's Hub Motor Inn. But no one would ever have thought of going to Hub Motor Inn Howard's. <laughs> That would have been a betrayal of the conservative culture. <laughs> you do. That's what conservatism really is. I mean, there's political conservatism, but there's that ground in, we do this this way, by God. That's the way it will always be. So we went to Howard's Hub Motor Inn. Especially like to hang out at the Motor Inn. It was across the street from a high wooden fence that was meant to keep outsiders from watching the big screen. There was a drive-in movie. We used to call it a dirty drive-in movie because they always had these triple X movies. But over at, the, over at the motor end, you could sit up on the fender of the hood of your car while you ate your slaw dog and coke, and you could watch the movie. Couldn't hear anything, but who cared? And then, this is around 1963, when it came time to go home, everybody would just sort of quit making the rounds and reluctantly give up on Saturday night. 
And the people from my part of the county would go down to Pleasant Hill, South Carolina, where I lived. And they would all pull into a meadow that had a big pond in it. It was called Leon's Pond. Leon was a prominent cotton farmer. And he let us guys with our cars. It was all guys. We'd taken our dates home. It was just the boys now. And we'd go around that pond and we'd line our cars up in a big semicircle. And we'd turn on two or three of the lights. And we'd all turn on our radios to one radio station. And turn them up real loud. And we listened to WLAC Asheville. Now I know you're probably thinking that this is deep south South Carolina. We were listening to country music in Nashville. You couldn't be more wrong. We were listening to all black music. We were listening to Sam Cooke. We were listening to Gary U.S. Bonds. We were listening to Ray Charles. Later in the night, you'd hear gospel music from two groups especially that I really liked. I love the names of these groups. The Swarm Silver Tone Singers and the Mighty Clouds of Joy. And we'd listen to it. And every now and then, somewhere, they'd come on, the radio would come on, all of a sudden, we'd hear, And let my love has come along. You know, they would just sit there and you wouldn't believe it how many, a dozen good old boys from 1963, South Carolina, sit up on the hood of their car, crying their eyes out, listening to Etta James. That was the way Saturday night was for us. So I would play a song about Saturday night. I'm a little embarrassed because the writer of this song is a Californian. <laughs> Best song I ever heard written about Saturday night. And if my voice would just hold out a little longer, I'll get through it. If you know it, you can sing any part of it, whatever you want. When you gassed her up, you were behind the wheel. All around you, a sweet one in your old mobile. Barreling down the boulevard. Looking for the heart. Of Saturday night You got pain on Friday Your pockets are jingling You see all the lights And you get all tingling Cause you're cruising with a six Looking for the heart Of Saturday night Shave your face. You try to wipe out every trace of all those other days of the week. This will be the Saturday that you're reaching your peak. Stop a little bit. Going on green. Tonight will be like. Nothing, baby, that you've ever seen. Barreling down the boulevard. Looking for the heart of Saturday
Have you gassed her up? You're behind the wheel. All around your sweet one in your old smoke. Paring down the boulevard. Looking for the heart of Saturday night. Paring down the boulevard. Looking for the heart of Saturday night. Come it with me. just gave up and went 100% solo. I've been playing solo since 68 concurrently with my bands. You know. I finally... What, what happens with the bands, you know, you, you understand when the Beatles broke up, you, they never could re revive themselves because the chemistry was what it was. What The chemistry is those four people. You just, so we couldn't replace anyone in our band. We were not the Beatles, but the chemistry was there. And we could not replace it. So I went completely solo and happy that I did. And I, from 1970, when I wrote my first song, to 1990, I wrote roughly 1,000 songs for my bands. But all of them require bass and drums and voices and piano and all this stuff. And none of them adapt well for a solo guitar. But I went looking through that catalog thinking, I want to be able to find something in here that I can play, you know. But I found four. <laughs> That's not bad, 400,000? <laughs> so I'll play you one of these now. Uh, grease the wheels so Eric can come up here with you. Have some fun. Birds will sing, tears will fall, the sun will shine, and that ain't all everything. Dance in the skies, everything will go on when you're gone. Lightning strikes and thunder rolls, you were shattered by the flows, everything will go on when you're gone. Now rocks are hard and so is love, and hard to make as the stars up above, and everything will go on. Dragonflies and sweep rain from southern skies. Everything will go on when you are gone. Lightning strikes and thunder rolls. And it will shatter my love and flows. Everything will go on when you are gone. Now take the pleasure and the pain. Cause when you're gone, the winds will change. The howl and never call your name. Got your gold, everything will go on when you're gone. And the speed of light, you know it won't slow down, but if it does, I'll bet you won't be around. Everything will go on when you're gone. Lightning strikes and thunder rolls, and you're a shadow of lava flows. Everything will go on when you're gone. Pleasure and the pain Cause when you're gone The winds will change But how And never call your name
forward and introducing my friend here and a child of both coasts about to circumnavigate the globe to find himself. <laughs> <laughs> you get the microphone. I do? Yeah, you get the microphone. Oh, all right, what are we doing? I have no clue. Am I singing? I guess so. Well, I guess so, so yeah. It, I, listen, <laughs> anything to keep me from having a singing one. Right I said, I said, didn't sit. Okay, there you go. You okay? Okay. <laughs> so I'm playing without a strap, you need without a, stool? a plug in, Her. but I'm going to sing in the microphone. This is, this is <laughs> special. Josh, I'll tell you what, do the Josh White thing. What's that? Put, put a chair and put your foot up on it. Oh, sweet. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't what I had heard. <laughs> Josh White. Oh, is he the guy that lived all over the South? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Sid, can you hear this guitar out there? Without a hand, I'll tell you what, I'm going to turn it on the back. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Tell you what, there's so few people here. Why don't I just turn mine on? Hey. Or wait. How's that? Let's hear it. Call in an expert. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> Stop thinking, get a job and achieve the approval of my neighbors. Buy myself a beamer and a condo out in Vail, send my boys off to college. If I can keep them out of jail, and maybe then I'll win them down to Florida. Get myself a melanoma yarmulke, take lots of long walks, eat prunes for your salt, wear plant drives growing, take herbal tea with my early bird special. Pray that my memory lasts as long as me, sit around the sauna, counting paracos vessels.
tackling Man with a Martin over there Telling me I'm losing my head Always 
there with those who would gladly tell me I'm no good. But I ask myself what the better man would do. He would love me so I will love me too.
there are people here. Oh. <laughs> well, I don't know. I just, we just got to forget. All right. Here. We should uh, respect our audience by doing what exactly? I don't know. Doing whatever we do. All right. Will you tell me, Jack? You play all you want. I mean, you know. I, I, I'm not like getting paid for this. I you realize that. I know. I'm, I'm really not getting paid for it. All right. All right. <laughs> Which way is out, darling? Um, I just have one last thing I'm going to do at the end. It can be done any time, it can be done any week. I, I, you know, it's not, you, only you've been measuring the level of attention span of your audience. So for all I knew, you've been realizing, you know what I mean? Could they, they could be ready to go, they could be ready to go and run the song. I don't know what to do about this. No. See, they could do just like that. They could just wait just on leave, the way out. <laughs> uh, we already got their money. What do you think? Did, play another one. Oh, I, I, at this point, I've decided that. I just have no idea what. <laughs> We don't, you know, we don't get to do this once or twice a year. That's right. So this is, uh, this is a good chance to do it. So rather than just do two and leave. <laughs>
At last. No, uh, uh, E. At last. A real song has come along. <laughs> My fudging it days are over. Civilization, considering what's going on in this stupid world. <laughs> so I'm going to close out by going just wherever I want to go. Eric just went off on his own little trip, and, and I, love to, I love to go off traveling with him when he goes. And I, I love to look on the faces of audiences who really think that maybe we just. <laughs> around I see people are a little bit younger than usually I play for. So a lot of this may go over your head. Just brace yourself. It'll be over soon. <laughs> Fairy tales can come true. It can happen to you. If you're young at heart, it's hard And if you should say 
105 to 105. Take up all of your drive out of being alive. And here is the best part. <coughs> you have a head start. You are among the very young born in the natural. Feel about half past dead. Looking for some place where I might lay my head. Can you tell me where a man might find a bed? He just grinned and shook my hand, but no was all he said. Take a load off heaven. Take a load for free. Take a load off heaven. And... That was not bad, you know? <laughs> Look at all the rest of these people just sitting around on their ass. And these people are just singing away. Yeah, that's it. You're welcome to sing along, just don't get attached to it. Better go, pretty baby, to the grocery store. We drink up all the wine and we need some more. Said we're going to get some snow So let's lay up in the cabin And watch the wind blow I you will be able to love you all day Treat her like a woman She will never run away Never live again When my back to the wall Cause you surround my music And my woman, that's all I love my music And my woman, that's all So strong. Some people say a man is made out of blood. Made out of muscle and blood, muscle and blood, skin and bone. Man, that's weak, and the back is strong. Hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back. Hey, little Ritz Tally. <laughs> hey, little Ritz Tally. And they say they in the field. But at the Nobel Prize in literature, I can tell a story, I can tell it all About a mountain boy who ran illegal alcohol His daddy made the whiskey, son he ran the road And when the engine tore me all the highway thunder road And there was thunder, 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 thunder road Thunder was his engine, and white lightning was his load And there was moonshine, moonshine to quest the devil's thirst The lawless one that geared him, but the devil got him first You know who sang that song? You see that movie? Thunder Road? Everybody too young? Remember Robert Mitchell? Robert Mitchell played the daddy in the movie and he sang that song, made a hit out of it. He also wrote the song. I thought maybe Robert Mitchell missed out on a great career playing for small groups, making tens of dollars. <laughs> Cigarette, I'd murder that son of a gun in the first degree. It ain't like I would smoke myself, I don't like it's going to hit him hell. <laughs> Smoking all my life, I ain't dead yet. But them nicotine slaves, they're all the same at a petting party or a poker. 
poker game, everything's got to stop. Why well, you have a cigarette? Smoke, smoke, smoke that cigarette. See, St. Peter's Golden Gate, you just hate to make it wait, but you just gotta have another cigarette. I feel good. I knew that I would. I feel good. I knew that I would. So good. So good. How about you? Everybody's going out and having fun. I'm just a fool for staying home and getting none. Can't get over the house is set me free. Oh, wants me. I just realized that nine out of ten people in this room have no clue what these songs are. But I don't care. I'm just an old happy dude. You go your way. Listen to all that crap on the radio. <laughs> Crap on the radio, crap on the radio, it's go your way, go your way, there's no only crap on the radio, I just made that up, did you, did you tell <laughs> singing their own stuff. <laughs> but there were a couple of singer-songwriters. They were great songwriters. One of them wrote this. 
Songwriters today can't play chords like this, this thing or write melodies like this. Hate to say that, but it's true. It's okay. The guy's name was Hokey Carmichael. He wrote the song that was to become the state song of my alma mater state. But it wasn't Hokey that sang it to make it famous. It was a black guy named Ray Charles. Georgia! Oh, Georgia! The whole day through. He was a singer songwriter. Back in the old days, he actually could sing his own material. He didn't do it like they do today. He didn't do it like Woody Guthrie did. But back in the era, when the famous people, you know, the big Louis and Ella or Bing Crosby or Frank Sinatra sang their songs. But his best pal, occasional songwriting buddy, occasional roommate, was also a singer-songwriter, one of my favorites. He's buried in his hometown of Savannah, Georgia. If you head to Savannah from Jacksonville, and you turn right to go over to the beach before hitting the city, you'll cross over Moon River. Then you'll get on the Johnny Mercer Expressway and drive into the city. And he wrote this. I'm gonna love you like nobody's loved you. Come rain or come shine. High as a mountain. Deep as a river, come rain, rain, rain will come shine. You said when you met me that it was just one of those things. But oh, oh, don't you ever bet me? Cause I'm gonna be. Like nobody's loved me, come rain, come rain or come shine. Happy together, unhappy together, oh wouldn't it be fine? Days may be cloudy or sunny.